Hello YouTube, and I made a half assed attempt to try and clean my desk. Um, this today is a Sonoff, it's upside down, Sonoff smart plug, Wi-Fi plug. And it's not being smart because it won't turn off. It turns off, um, actually, I can show you, I can't. Right, so I haven't got anything to actually plug into it to show you because, you know, I'm organised. So I thought I'd shove two leads in it and show you the mains because, you know, safety. That's the number one priority, isn't it? So as you can see, it is currently on. We have 240 volts. And if I turn it off, we have 240 volts. It's actually on now because the blue ring ling's on. Ring ling's on? Ring's on. Ling's on. So you can see the light works to say it's on and off, but there is no change in output. Let's take this off so we don't kill ourselves. Obviously, that's bypassing the safety mechanism inside the plug. And if we listen carefully, and I'll start to shut up for a minute, you can hear. If I hold that down, I don't know if you can hear the relay ticking. There is a slight tick noise on the relay. It's after I take the fixed button on, and then as I set my finger off the button, you hear a boom. You might not have heard that, but anyway, I can hear that. So there, I think the relay is trying to do something, but it's not pulling in. So uh, we'll take it apart and have a look. So I only held in with two screws and then a bit of pry. So basically pulling on the earth lead. Oh, my phone's going off. And then, get him out. Ugh, one handed. That's not working. Right. Uh, that doesn't work. Oh, the Chinese have tricked me. So behind this obvious quality seal, there's a third screw. Everything is so much difficult when you do it one-handed. And with the third screw out, we have the circuit ball. And there's your little safety shutter thing for the British sockets. Two LEDs for your on and off. Now this is probably going to be charged because um, we've just plugged it in. So... There we go. There's not a lot on there, is there? That's less than I was expecting. Um, two screws there, and we'll see how it uh, comes apart. How it comes apart, how it works. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Just a side note before I take it apart any further. Look at these terminals. Look how they've got a spring around them to keep them closed. And then the lives, this one's the live? Yes, it is the live one. The live feed is actually held by a ring lug onto the terminal, so... Okay, in fact, is that one a ring lug at the bottom as well? Oh, that's just to hold that terminal in, I think. So that is actually um, crimped in, and that is a crimp on a ring lug, which is... looks like an afterthought. That's a bit strange. Of course, of course if that's a bad connection, it's going to heat up. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Mind you, you've only got a tiny little switching relay here. This is the switching relay. So any large inductive loads, that's going to obviously um, world close, which is what could have happened to this, but there hasn't been any large inductive, inductive loads. Anyway, I'm rambling now. We'll take it out. So what we got here? Uh, we have got mains coming in. We've got it going through bridge rectifier here. So you've got fuse. Then a MOV, so a MOV's quite nice. Then bridge rectifier, 400 volt caps along this bit here. And then that 400 volts goes to this switching regulator, which will then give your output here. So this will probably be about five ish volt output, I would have thought. Diode. And then another voltage regulator, which will be going to the ESP, probably 3.3 down to the ESP. ESP8266, which runs the. Um, Sonoff software, little um, flash memory chip, programming JTAG. So you could you could reflash this for something like um, ESP Home or something if you really want to, or Tasmoda. And then the relays here. So you see the relay, and there's the diode across the coil. So the coil contacts are going to be there, transistor to drive the relay. So what we want to do is go across here and see if uh, we get the switching. Voltage turn the, the if the relay is getting a signal, turn it on and off. I'll drive the coil, and then yeah, we we'll go from that. Because if that's being driven, then we know it's going to be the relay because we know the contacts on the relay are bad. So straight from there. So make this safe. Shall we fit some wire links? Maybe. Oh, it's now powered up and killable, so it can kill you.
uh, got wires links hooked up to their uh, input of the relay. So across the coil, there's my voltmeter measuring nothing. And I've got a green light saying it's powered and connected to the internet and jazz. And the purple light, or blue light is relay on. So push the button with a pen so I don't let kill myself. There you go. Five volts across the relay. Nothing across the relay. So the is that that's now working? Because I can hear it ticking. Hmm, interesting. Uh, right, I need to get my other leads, don't I? Just to make sure. Make sure that it hasn't started working all of a sudden. I've just knocked it and freed up the contacts in there. That might be all it was. Hmm, okay. Well, what do you know it? So I've got a meter on the output. So I've got six volts. Must be capacitance across the um, relay that's giving me the six volts. And if I turn it on. 2.30, off, six. So it's now working again. I reckon what that was is the switch in the actual relay was slightly welded together and knocking it around and banging it has actually fle freed that up. So if I wanted to, I could change that relay and just keep it going and you know, replace it and call it good. Or what I'm actually gonna do is say it's good and put the case back on see how long it lasts. So yeah, I would say that's fixed, but that's fixed just by banging it basically. But at least we got to have a look inside, and we did get to see an ESP8266. <laughs> right, for now, I'll see you later. Bye for now. Oh, don't go on, it's too live.